Quick disclaimer before we get started, always work at your own risk, and if it's your first time doing any of these, I'd highly recommend working alongside someone with some experience. Now my car, which you're gonna see in the video, is a 2017 340i. It has the B58 engine and the ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. Now BMW has used both the engine and the transmission in many of their vehicles from around 2016 to the present, so even if you don't have the exact same car as me, chances are at least part of this video will be applicable to you. This is gonna be a longer video, so I have broken up into chapters, feel free to skip around, grab what you need, or bookmark this video for a later time. Today we're gonna to be changing every fluid on the 340i. We've got all these fluids here and uh, we're gonna to try to be as detailed as possible with this, but I kinda of wanna give you guys an overview of how all these different fluids are changed and you can decide for yourself which ones you wanna tackle at home and which ones might be easier to just take somewhere. Uh, you're gonna see in the video, some of these are gonna be a lot easier to do if you have a lift. Uh, so yeah, we'll just show you how to do it and you can decide for yourself uh, which ones you wanna try at home. Hey, my name is Brian at Keys, and today I'm going to be helping Justin out with all of these fluids, starting with the oil. Now, when you're changing your oil, you wanna make sure that you have a BMW approved oil for your car. For Justin's car, he needs a 0W20, so we have the Liquimali Top Tech 6600, we have the 0W20, and you wanna make sure that you have a BMW Long Life 17 FE certification. Otherwise, if BMW really wanted to, they could void any warranty you may have left. So with that, let's get started. Remove the 17 millimeter drain plug and have something ready to catch the oil. Remove the acoustic engine cover to access the oil filter. You'll need a 32 millimeter socket on a swivel extension to remove it. With the oil filter out of the car, what you wanna do is separate it from the plastic housing just by pulling down like that. And then it's very important to replace your sealing O-ring. So all you need to do is just pull up or use a pick tool and then slide that off. And then in your oil filter kit, you're going to have your brand new filter and you're going to have a new crush washer for the bottom and then your new sealing O-ring. You wanna make sure that you take it and get it into this groove right here. Otherwise you may have an oil leak. So we'll take that, put that there like that. Take your new filter, the small end goes this way. Just clip that into place like that. And then take a little dab of your new oil and lubricate the lower and also the upper O-rings. Then we can reinstall it in the car. Reinstall both the oil filter and the drain plug and torque them both to 25 Newton meters. You are watching a master at work. And to make sure Justin gets the most protection possible, we're going to be adding in Ceratec, which essentially ceramic coats the inside of your engine for superior wear protection. All right, so now that the oil change is done, it is time to change out the coolant. If you take a look over here, the B58 engine has a high temperature coolant system and also a low temperature. So with that, let's jump right in. Jack up the car and remove about a million eight millimeter screws to access the bottom of the radiator. There's a little clip here. Once the clip is released, hold the hose straight back and get ready for a waterfall. coming out again um, and then that way it just snaps on so when you snap it on these two little pieces in here they just 
and then you hear the audible click. A little trick for reinstallation, if you take a little silicone and you apply it to this little O-ring in the inside, it's going to make it a thousand times easier to clip it back on. <laughs> the other thing when you're removing and reinstalling coolant lines, you'll see that there's this little notch at the bottom and then you'll also see that there's one here. So if you try to twist it, it's not gonna do anything. And when you go to put it back in, you have to make sure that you line up that bottom notch and also the top one. So just line it up, find where it goes, and then with silicone, it'll slip right on. Do the same thing on the other side as well. Unclip the hose and pull it straight off. All right, for the F3340, it requires BMW's blue coolant. Some of the newer cars are now taking green, but Justin's is still the blue one. So it's a 50-50 blend of BMW coolant and also distilled water. Typically, it's going to take three or four gallons or so. So we like to mix them in one of these five gallon jugs, makes it super convenient. Have you ever slipped and fell in here? All the time. All right, so at this point, all of the coolant is out of the system and we need to put new coolant in, but it's not as simple as just pouring new coolant in like you do with your oil. What you need to do is you need to get all of this air out. So what we do is we use this little device right here. It's called a vacuum bleeder. And what it does is you put it on here on your coolant tank and it's going to create a vacuum and it's going to pull out all of the air out of the system. And then from there, I'm gonna flip a little switch over there and it's going to replace all of that air with our freshly blended coolant. So at this time, let's make it happen. This is my valve that controls if air is getting in or out of the coolant system. And then from there, I let the air flow go through. And when the air is blowing through here, it's creating suction, as you can see up here. So once this gets to 25, I'm gonna close it off. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch the gauge. And if it stays to 25, you have a perfect vacuum. If it starts to go back down, that means you have a coolant leak. So we'll be able to test your system as well. Especially since this side is a little bit low. And yours is steady, so you don't have any kind of leaks or anything. And then, when I flip the switch, this coolant's gonna fly out of here. Okay. And then what I do, I typically stop it, and then I create another vacuum in the system. And what'll happen once it starts to get full, it won't go all the way. Then we can stop that. Let that ride out. Then I can release the suction. Remove any excess coolant from the reservoir so that the level is between the minimum and maximum on the marker. Now that we've filled and bled the main system, let's do it on the secondary system. Next up, we're going to swap out the diff fluid. Now, because Justin's car does not have a limited slip differential, there is no drain plug on the bottom. So what you need to do is remove the fill plug and then you take a little tube and then you're going to extract the fluid and then you're going to top it off. To get to that, you're going to take an E12 and remove this bolt here. Okay. And then you're going to have access to the actual drain. The fill plug is a 14 millimeter Allen. Ta -da. 
So one of the things that makes this a little bit more difficult without the right tools is you wanna make sure that you have the car level and in the air. In the air, obviously, because you have to be under the car safely. Um, and then level because for the fill process, once we extract the fluid, you're basically just going to fill it until it starts to dribble out. And then you're going to reinstall your drain bolt. Um, why don't they give you an actual amount of fluid? I don't know, it's just one of the things that BMW does, but if you have the car jacked up too much in the front or the rear, you could underfill it or you could overfill it. So always make sure that you have the car as level as possible. So now what we're going to use is a basic extractor. We're gonna stick the hose in here. And you'll notice that I added a little hose. This is actually line that we use when we do water meth injection because that helps actually twist down so that I can get as much of this out as possible. So after about five syringes or so full, we are at a point where we are getting not a dribble. Oh, there we go, Never mind. <laughs> Found some more. <laughs> all right, so now that this is all cleaned out, what we can do is fill it with fluid and basically just fill the diff until it starts to overflow. Then you can reinstall your drain bolt and torque it to 60 newton meters. All right, we are moving right along here. Next is gonna be the transmission fluid. And while we're at it, we're gonna be replacing the transmission pan with this cool aluminum one. So of course the BMW, the stock one is just made out of plastic. And I don't care what anyone says, anything that's plastic on the car can break. This should hopefully be a little bit more substantial. And this kit comes with all the hardware and the filter too. Remove this underbody panel as well as the exhaust support that's in the way of the fill plug. What we can do is we can drain the fluid out of here. The best way to do it is to start by releasing this drain plug right here. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to loosen this side more so the whole pan will actually drip this way. This is gonna make sure you stay as clean as possible because this does get pretty messy. Okay, so we'll loosen this with a 10 mil. a jellyfish <laughs> if you're going to use some kind of an impact to remove these screws always start by doing it by hand to at least break the tension otherwise if you go too fast and furious you could snap the studs off and then you're in for a much bigger project than you bargained for remove the t40 bolts for the oil pan Remember to keep a few loosely installed at one end so you can angle the pan down and drain any remaining fluid. There you go, that's your chance. Yep. All right, now what we're gonna do is take a clean microfiber towel and make sure the ceiling area is as clean as possible. The cleaner you get this, the better your seal will be. So before we install this, we just have to set up the filter. So it's gonna come with the filter and all the hardware that you need. So this is just gonna go in this little insert here. There's like a cutout for it. And then you're just gonna align this little chimney part <laughs> with the corner. It has instructions so you'll know what to do when you install it. And then you just grab your hardware. So this is gonna be the little black screws that it comes with. 
Then you can just kind of hand thread them to get them started. So then we're just gonna put a little bit of that fluid on the new gasket. Put some fluid on the outer gasket as well before installing it on the car. Be sure to follow the sequence when torquing the bolts. After they're all torqued to 10 newton meters, go back and double check them to make sure that they're all within spec. All right, now that that's all torqued down, we can install our drain plug, which as you can see here, has a built-in magnet. So if you have any metal floating around, it should grab it, which is gonna help save your trans. All right, now what we need to do is the fill process for the transmission. This part does get a little bit messy. Um, as you can see, we have Liquid Molly Top Tech 1800. We have a little barrel of it. Um, typically, you just get this in smaller containers, but we use it quite a bit, so we get this. So I just transferred it into a gallon jug, and we are going to do the first fill, and then we'll show you what to do from there. You go until it starts to leak out. I should also point out, we're changing this at 60,000 miles. BMW is a little ambiguous about the transmission interval, but ZF, the company who manufactures these, recommends 50,000 mile intervals. Drain plug back in. All right, now that the first fill is completed, what we need to do is start the car and watch the transmission temperature and wait till it gets to about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Then what we're going to do is we are going to take out the drain plug, see if any fluid comes out. If not, we're going to fill it again with fluid until it starts to come back out. And then we're gonna reinstall the drain plug and we have one more heat cycle process we need to go through. To check the transmission temperature, we're using Beamer Geek's Pro Tool. Feel free to use whichever software you like that can show live parameters. With the transmission up to temperature, engage park and hold the RPM at 2000 for 30 seconds. Then, with your foot on the brake, engage park, reverse, drive, and then D1 and D2, holding each position for 10 seconds. This shot is sped up so you didn't have to sit through a minute of shifting gears. You're welcome. All right, after you do this, we just got it up to 35 degrees Celsius. If you're used to Fahrenheit, and it's pretty hot. Don't touch this, <laughs> because you will burn yourself. All right, let's pull out the plug. With the engine yeah, still running, unscrew the fill plug. Since no fluid came out, we'll fill it until it overflows from the fill hole. Note that the engine must be running for this step to get a proper level. All right, so it looks like our fill is sufficient, so I'm just gonna let this settle down a little bit. I'll put this back in, and then we'll torque it to spec. Torque this down to 35 Newton meters. Good, and we're done. All right, last but not least, we are going to be installing some Likumali race brake fluid. So to do so, we have our motive bleeder, and basically we're going to pour our fluid into here. We're gonna pressurize this, and then we're going to go around, and we're going to bleed out the brakes, get the old fluid out, and get this new high-performance fluid in, and then Justin's gonna be all done. All right, so to get this started, what we did is we put in four of these bottles. So as you can see, these are 250 mils each. Um, this should be enough. If we need more, we do have more on hand. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna start with the brake furthest from this reservoir up here. So that's going to be the passenger rear. Then you go to the driver rear, then the passenger front, and then up here. Um, the way that you tell when the old fluid is out and the new is in, typically you'll see a color difference. Um, now he just did this not too long ago, so it might be very subtle because this fluid's probably very clean, um, but you should still be able to notice the difference. All right, so then you get one of these little catch cans. 
and you put the silicone hose on the back of the bleeder screw. And basically, since the system is pressurized, it's like what you used to do in the olden days, or what Justin does now, is you push on the brake pedal. But anyway, since the system's pressurized, the fluid will start coming out. All right, so as you can see in there, it's all dark and nasty, but in the tube is nice and clean. So that tells us that this one's done. So I can close that bleed screw back up and then we can move on to the next one. Repeat this process on all four corners. Remove the bleed screw cap, attach your hose, then loosen the 11 millimeter bleed screw. The pressure from the power bleeder will force the old fluid out. Once you see clean new fluid coming out through the hose, tighten the bleed screw and replace the cap. Now if you have this style brake setup, what you want to do is make sure you get the one on the front and the one in the back. The ones in the rear just have one bleeder, the ones in the front have an outer and they have an inner, so make sure you do both. So once you get done bleeding the brakes, you just want to hop in the car and pump them up and you should be good to go. If you can tell, we're really exhausted right now because the show was yesterday. We just pushed through this today to get it done. Um, but thank you so much for all your help, man. No uh, I'm going to link all the products and everything down below. You can find everything online and you can follow him at Keys Motorsports on YouTube, Instagram. And uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.